roll everybody. I'll be honest with you. This is the fourth fucking time I've done this. I'm getting a bit pissed off now. I keep forgetting to press the record button. Jesus. Oh, the shark bait has such teeth there. And it shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has old Maggie Heap, baby. And it Mickey. keeps it uh, out of sight. You know when that shark bites with his teeth, baby. Scarlet billows start to spread. Fancy gloves, though, where's old Maggie Heath, babe? So there's never, never a trace of red. Now on the sidewalk, oh, ooh, Sunday morning, uh -huh, lies a body just oozing light. Can someone sneak in round the corner? Could that someone be Mac the Knife? There's a tugboat down by the river, don't you know? Where a cement bed just drooping on down. Oh, that cement is just, it's there for the weight to dare. Five will get you ten old Mackey's back in town. Now you hear about the way Miller He disappeared, babe After drawing out All his modern cash And now Maggie Heath has been Just like a server Could it be our boy's done Something rash Oh, oh, oh Sugitore Jenny Diver. Sugi Tawdry. Lord Elenia. And old Lucy Brown. And old Lucy Brown. Yes, that line forms on, on the right page. Not that Maggie. <laughs> Back in What are we? We're in the sort of um, post-Christmas time, post-truth era. But um, if you love Christmas, I hope you had a great one. If you hate Christmas, I hope you managed to endure it. And next year will be better for all of us. Um, but as I was saying, we are in what are we in? We're in the post-truth area, area. The post-truth era. I mean, but what is truth? Um, is truth objective or subjective? Are the Mary, Mary, fucking hell, many variations of truth. Um, anyway, I'm Padder the Badger O'Donoghue, or Padder the Badger O'Donoghue. Or Padder the Badger or Dolida, uh, depending on uh, which uh, truth, uh, true version <coughs> of my name there is. Uh, but in this broadcast, we are sticking to the truth in this era of post truth and misinformation and lies and disinformation and mistruths and misguidance we have the truth 
So, stick to that theme. That introduction song was the unmistakable voice of Bing Crosby. And to, to make sure I get everything correct, I've made some notes. And uh, Bing Crosby, um, of course, was the famous uh, singing whistling a milkman who is spotted on his rounds by famous producer Babe Rube Rubenstein, who headhunted him and signed him up for a three-week stint at the Billy Holiday Inn. And uh, that set him on his uh, stellar and mighty trajectory to stardom. Uh, Bing went on to have a great uh, career and he uh, married the film star Loretta Lynn and had three three boys, three children, the most famous of which, which was Frank Sinatra, who himself had, albeit a mediocre uh, singing career. Um, but yeah, that's it. And now I'm going to read you some poetry. I'm sorry about that. I do apologise. And it's from Poetry Review 1995, which is almost 300 years ago. And the first poem is by World War I poet and uh, friend and confidant of the likes of Vidal Sassoon and Wilfred Owens. Uh, this is called A Glory. Right here. You made an angel of yourself, free falling backwards into last night's snow, indenting a straight, neat, crucified shape, then flapping your arms, one stroke, a great bird, to leave the impression of your wings. It worked. Then you found your feet, sprang clear of the print, and the angel remained, fixed, countersunk, open wide, hosting the whole of the sky. Losing sleep because of it, I backtracked to the place, out of earshot of the streets, above the fetch and reach of the town, the scene of the crime. Five-eighths of the moon, on ground where snow has given up the ghost, it lies on its own, spread-eagled, embossed, commending itself, star of its own cause, priceless thing. The faceless hood of the head, Grass making out through the scored spine, the wings on the turn, becoming feathered, clipped. Cattle would trample roughshod over it, hikers might come with pebbles for the eyes, a choice of fruit for the nose and the lips, somebody's boy might try it on for size, might lay down in its shroud, might suit, might fit. Angel from under the shade and shelter of trees. I keep watch, wait for the dawn to take you, raise you imperceptibly by degrees. At the back of the book that I should have bookmarked and now cannot find is Sally Carr with um, Transatlantic Call. Strange that you should call tonight while I sit, curtains drawn listening to the wind gusting storm force in the pines. Your voice in this shell held to my ear is crystal clear, neighbourhood close. Yet you talk of snow, how it's twenty below in Chicago. We say goodbye, love you, bye. The shell plastic again. Outside the poplars fill like giant sails. I wrap the warmth and light of the room around me, not sure what I'm shutting out. The wild night and remembered film of coastal erosion, roaring and grinding the length of the western seaboard, right now. The shifting of our house, foolishly built on sands, or your voice, so, so frozen along the cable, it's already snapped from me, an ocean away in the snow. Um, I wrote my own collection of poems uh, 
called Jill, published by Salmon Poultry in 2012, which is a long, long, long time ago. Um, and for your delectation and disaffection and misery, I would like to read you some poems of mine and I haven't bookmarked them and now I cannot find them but I'll start with a Christmas poem uh, it was written after it was written uh, a long time well not a long time ago a few years ago when I was remained redundant from my job as chief executive of a highly uh, profitable company no it, no I was a, a furniture uh, deliverer and I was made redundant and we had very little spondulix uh, filthy lucre uh, fucking arrogant stamps money um, anyway it's called this Christmas we this Christmas we stretch the fabric of life by kerosene by the gallon cut washing up sponges in two surf supermarket car park I should start that again because I fucked that up this Christmas we stretch the fabric of life by kerosene by the gallon cut washing up sponges in two Surf supermarket car parks for the abandoned trolley shiny reward. We raid jam jars, pluck forgotten coins from sofa, armchairs, old coats, trousers and dusty drawers. We drink brought home Spanish brandy from other people's holidays. We mend, we contract, cut back, we shrink and save. We winnow but keep it all. We are not yet old, not yet finished. We reduce, reuse, recycle. We cope, we survive in f this world's luxury. We rejoice in hope and are glad. And then kind of a post, uh, well first a post apocalyptic poem and then a post a Christmas poem. After the deluge not quite darkness, not quite wilderness, not quite wandering, more surely walking, wandering, balanced on the converging parallels of talking and listening, grabbing at tricoloured stars to steady me as they pass around words like theological iodine tablets for the fallout from the nuclear bomb branded as fireworks. We are the vicarious walking wounded countless others, lives, families, selves, blown to pieces, if not kingdom come. Would there, if only their kingdom would come. For how else, where else, do we go from here? And then the kind of post-Christmas New Year, kind of, I think it's kind of a hopeful poem, as much as I can do hope. Uh, a dystopian, kind of misanthropic, person like me <laughs> it's called a uh, starfish on the beach I was looking for hares foxes rabbits on the hillside I was reaching for things out of reach for unlimited words to make sense of me trying not to grow old too quick running away by standing still this was winter time there was no escaping that look at the sea the skies the dead looks of trees bereft of mournful fall, their leaves blown to the four winds and corners of the earth. Wave after wave, tide after tide, singing us the song of winter, Christmas come and gone. A newborn year, candles still to be lit, and nothing but starfish, starfish on the beach. Um, I think I think that's kind of it, isn't it? That's that's enough fucking poetry for one day possibly for one lifetime uh, but I'm going to leave you with where did you go come back to me come here to me I'm going to leave you with uh, a song by uh, 
one of my favorite groups, the Ramones or the Ramones or the Ramones. Um, the Ramones were three sets of identical twins, Joey, Boney, Jimmy, Louie, Huey and Sid. Boney was a nickname because, um, because he was so skinny. Everyone called him Boney Motherfucker and uh, or Boney M for short and uh, that name or moniker was adopted by that kind of funky soul group Boney M by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down here we went and I remember Zion that's where they got the name from and uh, one of their other hits um, was Sheena is a punk rocker. Sheena is a punk rocker. Sheena is a punk rocker. Sheena is a punk rocker now. She's a punk punk, a punk rocker. Punk punk, punk rocker. And um, that was written for and after and before and by and because of Sheena Easton, the uh, famous Scottish a songstress who had a very almost quite nearly uh, tremendous kind of or, or, well ordinary kind of uh, brilliantly average normal fantastic uh, singing career herself and uh, what did she sing what did she used to sing I don't know uh, why did she, why did she no hang on a minute hang on and uh, after her singing career, she went on to become a Scottish N SNP uh, councillor for uh, the Gorbals uh, district of Glasgow, or Glasgow, as it's also known. And um, I think that's all the information you need for now, but I shall be back with more information very shortly. <coughs> and uh, here they are now. The Ramones with um, the love song called Beat on the Brat.
nós 